Welcome to today's Spiritual Awakening Radio Podcast, titled Hidden Sayings of John the Baptist. When I was thinking about what to call today's program, I chose Hidden Sayings of John the Baptist because it will make some remember or recall the Gospel of Thomas, a collection of the hidden sayings of Jesus, Proverbs of Jesus. And you'll hear today some sayings of John the Baptist that are very much like that. Indeed, a few of those sound like something you would hear in the Sermon on the Mount or other New Testament writings. There are some parallels between the Mandaean Aramaic Gnostic scriptures and the New Testament, some Jesus uh, sounding sayings you'll find in Mandaean scriptures. I am the fisher of souls. I am a shepherd who loves his sheep. I protect the sheep and the lambs. I carry them and give them water to drink from the hollow of my hand until they have drunk their fill. Give bread, water, and shelter to the poor, the persecuted people who suffer persecution. Love and support one another. When you see anyone who is hungry, then satisfy his hunger. When you see anyone who is thirsty, then give him to drink. For whosoever gives, receives. My chosen, do not put your trust in the kings, rulers, and rebels of this world, nor in military forces, arms, conflict, and the hosts which they assemble, nor in silver and gold. Their gold and their silver will not save them. Their authority passes away and comes to an end. The words seek and you will find appear on numerous occasions in the Mandaean scriptures as well. In fact, much more often than in the New Testament itself. And the term place of life, often used in the Mandaean scriptures, also appears in the Gospel of Thomas, as does the term the living one, the living John the Baptist, the living Jesus. So these Mandaean scriptures feel very old and are in a dialect of the Aramaic language. Before I get to the main course, the hidden sayings of John the Baptist found in the Ginza Rabbah, a section of the oldest of the Mandaean scriptures, I want to actually start with something much more familiar. It makes sense that there would be some parallels between the teachings of John the Baptist and Jesus, since John was Jesus' spiritual master. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, it says, Now, once he was in a certain place praying, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples, John the Baptist's disciples. He said to them, Say this when you pray, Father, may your name be held holy, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. The Gospel of the Nazarenes or Nazareans, renders it this way, provide us today with the bread we need for tomorrow. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive each one who is in debt to us, and do not put us to the test. That's the Lord's Prayer, which turns out to be modeled upon the prayer of John the Baptist, making use of the Jerusalem Bible translation, with an alternate reading found in a parallel verse from the Gospel of the Nazareans. I'm using different translations so that the Lord's Prayer doesn't sound like it usually does when people recite it in church or at funerals or public gatherings, making it fresh and new and with Aramaic roots. This is a version from the Tree of Life translation. Now Yeshua was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Master, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Then Yeshua said to them, When you pray, say, Father, sanctified be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone indebted to us 
and lead us not into temptation. That's from the Tree of Life version. The Amplified Bible, making use of another manuscript, renders that last verse this way, and lead us not into temptation, but rescue us from evil. And finally, this is from the complete Jewish Bible, the same Lord's Prayer modeled after the prayer of John the Baptist. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come. Give us each day the food we need. Forgive us our sins, for we too forgive everyone who has wronged us. And do not lead us into hard testing. There is a vegetarian depiction of John the Baptist's diet in the old Slavonic edition of the book of Josephus. Josephus actually quotes John the Baptist as saying the following, I am pure, for the Spirit of God has led me on, and I live on cane and roots and tree food. Unquote. Josephus says of John and every animal he abhorred as food, and every wrong he rebuked, and tree produce served him for use. Unquote. John was a vegetarian, according to Josephus, based and plant based was he. The following is a reading from the book Secret Teachings of the Angelic Kings, while we're on the subject of vegetarianism and the John the Baptist group known as the Nazareans or Nazareans. From page 149, Secret Teachings of the Angelic Kings is by David Israel and is a translation of the book of John the Baptist. A man die in scripture. Here he is commenting on a particular section of the book of John the Baptist and delves into the vegetarianism of this group. Chapters 36 through 39, Fisher. In these four chapters, we once again encounter Yeshu, this time as the fisher of souls. These chapters, because of their greater detail and nature, appear to be the original inspiration behind the Fisher parables of later hearsay that eventually made their garbled way into the New Testament Gospels. Yeshu tells us repeatedly here that he does not eat fish. The New Testament encouragement to eat fish and lamb is a false tradition, we know that it is false not only because of the references within these chapters, but also because we possess an account of the effect that the preaching of John the Baptist had on eradicating all kinds of inferior behavior in Judea, including fish eating. And then he goes on to quote a saying of John the Baptist. I call these hidden sayings because we're not used to, we're not accustomed to hearing John the Baptist actually quoted anywhere, be it New Testament or apocryphal writings, saying of John, Before my voice and the voice of my proclamations, the fishers fish not in Jerusalem. Before my voice and the voice of my proclamations, the fishers fish not in Jerusalem. Unquote. Commentary: A pure vegan diet is everywhere promoted within this genre of ancient texts. The later Mandaeans that preserved them now eat meat, but they admit that the originators of the scrolls were strict vegetarians. And then the author of the translator, uh, David Israel, in Secret Teachings of the Angelic Kings, a translation of the John the Baptist book, cites a reference, Ethel S. Drower, her book, Mandaeans of Iraq and Iran. And I have extracted from that book a few quotes, as well as from another E.S. Drower book. Eth Ethel Drower was a famous Mandaean Gnostic scholar who had good relations with the Mandaeans, lived with them, had access to their scriptures, and I think she actually followed the Mandaean Gnostic 
religion as her own personal spiritual path. It certainly reads that way when you when you check out her writings. You know, it seems she had a lot of reverence for the Mandaean Gnostic teachings, and it was her own personal spiritual path, I believe. She says, Several pious Mandaeans have told me that a deep religious man forswears meat and fish. It will be seen in the legends that the Nazare are represented as vegetarians, an Indo-European and Buddhist rather than a Semitic trend of thought, unquote. Also, she says, quote, the Essenes, together with other Jewish sects, seem to have imbibed, possibly from Iranian Indian sources, the idea that slaughter was a crime and that sacrifice of animals was unpleasing to the powers of light and life. The Essenes were vegetarians. It is possible that early Christianity derived its symbolism of a substituted victim and the symbolism of bread for the flesh of the victim and wine for its blood from this school of Jewish Iranian thought, unquote. Also from that same book, quote, Josephus mentions that the Essenes were vegetarians and Porphyry, quoting Eusebius, the church historian, says that the Magians, as in the Magi, were divided into three classes, those who abstained from eating any living creature, those who abstained from domestic animals, and those who would not touch any and every animal. Unquote. And one more veg passage from E.S. Drower on the Mandaean Nazareans, or the legacy of the Nazareans, the religion of John the Baptist. Quote, Among Mandaeans there is an oral tradition that some of them were once vegetarians. Unquote. That's from her book, The Secret Adam, The Secret Adam by E.S. Drower. And of course, that's also true of early Christianity. Uh, the Apostle Paul was arguing with vegetarian Jewish Christians in his letters uh, preserved in the New Testament, and those are the earliest parts of the New Testament, it's believed by some to be authored around 50 AD or so. And, of course, uh, we know from other writings, the uh, disciples of Jesus, James the Just and Jerusalem, advocated a vegetarian diet. And that makes sense also if the John group, the Nazareans, were vegetarians. It would make sense for Jesus to be vegetarian and for his original followers to also be vegetarians. Of course, later on, Paul, the Roman Empire, Romans had a different idea about diet. But we're interested in the earliest and the roots of this group and what they had for vegetarian ethics. So I thought I'd share those passages, the vegetarian passages, I have a whole podcast dedicated to the vegetarianism of John the Baptist making use of ancient texts, as well as modern scholars like Bart Ehrman. It's a podcast titled, John the Baptist's Vegetarian Diet, an Exploration of Early Christian Writings and Scholarly Texts. It went on a bit longer than I, than I originally envisioned because I found so many passages on the subject. So check out that podcast to learn more about the vegetarianism of John the Baptist and this spiritual movement that he once led or was one of the leaders of once upon a time that represent the roots of Nazarene religion and the roots of the Jesus movement as well. Somehow related to the Essenes, sometimes people just call all of these folks Essenes, but uh, the John the Baptist group seems to have, have come out of or was somehow adjacent to Essenism, and then the Jesus movement was a branch of the John the Baptist movement. And there are several others as well, several other rival sects, as you will find uh, if you read the Clementine homilies, the Clementine literature. Coming up next, a prayer attributed to John the Baptist found in Syriac Aramaic. A somewhat orthodox-sounding Trinitarian Syriac prayer attributed to John the Baptist. 
Holy Father, guard your strength and show us your glory and make your Son known to us. And fill us, my Lord, with your Spirit, which gives light through your knowledge. Unquote. Quite often, Orthodox prayers have creeds and dogma built in, affirming Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and other teachings. But this one ends with a kind of gnosis or mystical reference, with your spirit which gives light through your knowledge or gnosis, unquote. And that very much illustrates the Syriac tradition of Eastern Christianity, uh, a tradition that eventually conformed to Orthodox theology, but very much has a mystical or Gnostic side and mysticism. So the theology became fairly orthodox, and yet when the mystic or monk or single one enters into prayer, eventually they reach a level where prayer is dissolved into divine, uncreated light, the flowing light of the Godhead. There's some glorious, very deep mystical writings to be found uh, amongst Syriac literature, the writings of St. Isaac the Syrian, the Book of Grace. There's so many wonderful, very deep, very mystical writings amongst the Syriac literature of the Syriac saints and mystics. And now for the final uh, section, the main course, the hidden sayings of Johanna, the hidden sayings of John the Baptist. The Ginza Rabba, an Aramaic Mandaean scripture, the most ancient of the Mandaean or Mandaean Gnostic scriptures, represents many books within the book, kind of like the books of Enoch. You know, there's not just one book of Enoch, but several sections of first Enoch, several books within the book of second Enoch, and several books within the book of third Enoch. The Ginza Rabba, or Great Treasure of the Mandaeans, is like that too. There are many books all together. And one of them reminds me of the Gospel of Thomas, a collection of sayings or proverbs of wisdom. Only instead of hidden sayings of Jesus, we find hidden sayings of Jesus' spiritual master, John the Baptist. The instructions of Johanna, the instructions of John the Baptist. These are clear words inspired by the master of human beings. These are the instructions of Johanna, John the Baptist, son of Zechariah, to the Nazarea, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, the Nazareans, essentially, the sincere and faithful. In these writings, uh, they're not really referred to as Mandaean. That's a later term. They're referred to as the Nazare or Nazarea, Nazareans, Nazareans. That's the original name of this John the Baptist group. If you are strong, then be exemplary in your honesty, like the king who places a crown upon his head and wields his sword in the face of evil. If you are not so strong, then be a true Nazare, like a successful farmer, harvesting the fruit of the earth. The righteous will benefit from it, and those of exemplary honesty will derive strength from it. If you become a Nazarea, each of your virtues will be a weapon to help those of exemplary honesty. You are helping them through faith, integrity, knowledge, wisdom, learning, supplication, prayer, and glorification, charity, goodness, humility, perfection, purity, compassion, mercy, insight, and the love of truthfulness. The apex of truthfulness is 
not to distort speech, so do not lie or deceive others. The apex of faith is to believe that the great Hei, the great life, is the most constant in all virtues. The apex of integrity is to judge yourself. The apex of gnosis is not to be controlled by your temptations. The apex of knowledge is not to put yourself in jeopardy. The apex of wisdom is not to be playful among the believers. The apex of hope is to learn and teach the words of your Lord. The apex of instruction is not to abandon the recommendations of virtuous and pious teachers. The apex of your resolution is to not change your word. The apex of prayer and glorification is to not love sleep. The apex of charity is to feed the hungry and give drink to the thirsty. The apex of your clemency is to not be an ogre. The apex of humility is to keep mentioning the name of your Lord. The apex of your righteousness is to reform yourself and to accept the advice of wise men. The apex of moderation is to not say what you do not know. The apex of your happiness is to be respected by the people. The apex of discretion is to think before you speak. The apex of chivalry is to not seize what is not yours, even if you desire it. The apex of your purity is to purify yourself. The apex of your virtues is to control yourself. The apex of perfection is to not be arrogant. The apex of compassion is to have mercy for the poor and those who are persecuted. The apex of praise is to praise the place from which you came. The apex of remembrance is to not forget death. The apex of love is to collaborate with your brethren in loving your Lord. The just person is like a scale. The just person is like an honest judge. The believer is a successful farmer. The intellectual is an organized builder. The prudent person is a masterful artist. The steadfast person is like a mountain. He who doubles his prayers and glorifications will see double his profits. The almsgiver is like a table laid out for the poor and the needy. Clemency is like a delicious fruit. The humble person is like abundant water. The pure person is like a spring of fresh water. The pious person is like a well-polished mirror in which faces can easily be distinguished. Compassion is like the sun for both the pious and the impious. Mercy is like a gentle breeze that blows against all doors. He who is full of truth is like a righteous father who brings provisions for his sons. You, the chosen and righteous ones, keep yourselves away from deceit, sins, falsehood, lying, falsity, and from evil. Keep away from temptation, cruelty, and ignorance. Do not blaspheme and do not engage in adultery. Avoid envy and hatred, resentment and malice and shamelessness. Chosen ones, I warn you against contemptuous faces and do not engage in drunkenness or wrongdoing. Deceit is like a hole in the ground, covered over with straw. Sin is like a rotten pomegranate. The liar is an enemy in the guise of a friend. Trickery is a sea in which ships are lost. Evil is a tree of bitter fruit. Cruelty is gravel. Wrath is fire borne by the wind. An arrogant wise man is an unpolished mirror. Wisdom without discipline is a horse without a saddle. Wisdom without insight is a ship without a sailor. A quiet voice and balanced speech are the priorities of wisdom. Do not fear the wise man, even if you do not agree with him. The ignorant, through his ignorance, exposes himself to the sword. The ignorant dances while the bond is around his neck. Wisdom for the ignorant is like a mirror for a blind person. Many ignorant people who are silent are thought to be wise. Woe to those who say, but do not do. Woe to those who do the opposite. 
of what they say for those who hide the opposite of what they reveal. This is what was revealed to the faithful wise man, Johanna, John the Baptist, son of Zechariah in Jerusalem, the hidden sayings of John the Baptist. I say hidden sayings because not many have encountered these sayings. Not many are used to having John the Baptist quoted anywhere, right? Not in the New Testament, not in apocryphal writings too often. Hard to find any quote attributed to John the Baptist. Thus, I thought today would be great to round up these passages, the hidden sayings of John the Baptist. Thanks for joining me today for this Spiritual Awakening Radio podcast. My name is James Bean. Like, subscribe, follow this channel, follow this podcast so you get alerts and can hear about the next edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Thanks for joining me.